units played at Highfield Road, Coventry dealt with a Middlesbrough attack at some cost. Magnus Hedman collided with Gary Pallister and was clearly in trouble. Reserve goalkeeper was 17-year-old Chris Kirkland. Whether Gordon Strachan's decision not to expose the untried youngster was correct can only be matter for speculation. But when Vladimir Kinder put Borough ahead, Hedman looked less than fully mobile. Not so, said Strachan, he was simply wrong-footed. Coventry's answer came from their captain. Gary McAllister's premiership goals this season had only come from the penalty spot. This one from open play meant a lot to a team still not free from apprehension. Eight minutes left, still 1-1, a Middlesbrough corner. The clearance reaches Dean Gordon and the points are suddenly heading to the northeast, leaving Coventry looking anxiously over their shoulders again. Three points would have made life a lot easier and we would have felt a lot better than we do at this moment in time. To West Ham lately have been like London transport buses, none for ages, then stacks appear. Conductor-in-chief Paolo Di Canio, who set the wheels rolling with a shot deflected off Spencer Pryor's head and into the derby net. Leaner, fitter, less argumentative, Di Canio seemed settled in London. His composure led to the second, scored by Ayol Berkovic, who clearly wanted no kiss of congratulation. The Clariton Blue stage was set for the return from injury of the irrepressibly and right. On a sub, he gobbled up this rebound. Upton Park roared its approval. The Hammers had been goalless for two matches, but you wouldn't have guessed it. Trevor Sinclair's pace creating the fourth, a towering header from Neil Ruddock. Party time for Harry Redknapp's side. It was all very pleasing to the eye, West Ham full of movement and slick passing. Captain Steve Lomas ending this flurry of activity with a perfect cross, matched only by the execution from Trevor Sinclair. But Derby County deserved something from a match they'd more than contributed to. A neat back heel from Sturridge, setting up the man with the elastic limbs. Paolo Wanchop scoring from a near impossible angle. He may have looked crestfallen, but it was five-star entertainment for the fans. Derby came and attacked. They, they had a... Ten years on from Hillsborough, the memories at Anfield remain fresh and painful. Nowhere in the country today were the 96 who died mourned with deeper feeling. It was an afternoon that needed goals to lighten the emotion. In due course, Liverpool's vulnerable defence conceded one. Julian Jurchin may have intended a shot, but the ball reached Ian Taylor. Villa were in front and Liverpool had no reply. It was a defeat, said Gerard Houllier, that ended any Liverpool hope of qualifying for Europe. Villa were understandably happier. Everybody knows we've had the bad run. And, um... Going, going, but not quite gone. Ron Atkinson must feel a bit like King Canute, water lapping over his designer shoes. The water levels of the Trent were reaching danger levels by the end of the first half. Tottenham carved out this opening for Stefan Everson, who was halted in full flow by Richard Goff. Not much doubt about the penalty decision, which earned Goff a yellow card. Mark Crossley's filofax of penalty information proved useful. He guessed right. Nielsen left with a nasty egg stain on that lily white shirt. Forrest had their moments though. Goff's long searching ball headed on by Shipperley. Dougie Friedman bringing the best out of Ian Walker. But Spurs always had that extra touch of class and Forrest were always more prone to a defensive slip up. Edwards' poor clearance falling to Stefan Everson, and that, as they say, was that. Forrest could have nicked a point late on, but when you've had wretched luck all season, you seem to get more. Marlon Harewood, the man denied by Walker. The inevitable, fast approaching for Forrest. Today could have been the day. The results have half gone with us, even though we haven't done ourselves any favours. But we'll live to fight for another day and we'll start again next week.
no complaints at all about the team. the team. The team gave everything they've got, and that's all you can ask from any football team. I mean, if, if at the end of the day we're not going to be good enough, that's a different kettle of fish. Um, but certainly, certainly in terms of commitment, in terms of endeavour, in terms of trying to win a football match or trying not to get beaten in a football game, the boys give everything. <laughs> Jerison Stat and Steve Lee reporting on those matches. Now, Manchester United are four points clear. That goal difference of plus 40 could effectively be worth another crucial point in the final reckoning. Arsenal and Chelsea are both in action over the next two days with victories needed to maintain their title ambitions. Leeds stay fourth and Villa's win at Liverpool keeps them fifth above West Ham who had that big win today. Nottingham Forest, 21st defeat, virtually condemns them to relegation. They must win their four remaining matches to have the slightest hope of survival. Southampton and Blackburn stay in the bottom three after the draw. Charlton are still 17th. Everton with a big win.